god. Marathon training is so hard. Like, and we're only in week one. <laughs> Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You guys, this is, I am so out of practice talking to camera. This is like, I don't know why I'm having such a hard time right now, but give me two minutes and I swear to God, it'll be like riding a bike. <laughs> Before we get into showing you week one, I like how I talk to myself like we, we, as me and my multiple personalities. <laughs> it makes me feel better that I do all this work all by myself. Uh, okay, two things, housekeeping. One, Patreon. I finally launched my Patreon page. Uh, speaking of we, I'm a one woman show. Uh, if you like the Run Selfie Repeat podcast, and especially these guided runs that I've been doing, uh, I, I love making them. The Run Selfie Repeat podcast really did start as like, something that I did not think anyone would listen to. I really just wanted to like quickly, like silently launch a podcast and uh, learn the ropes of like writing, editing, talking, uh, produ performing and producing a show and make all my mistakes on that guy so that when I created my real show, I would know what I was doing. But when it launched, you all put it on the hot new list on iTunes and I kind of like had to hit the ground running and it became a thing. And I love it. I love the Run Selfie Repeat podcast, but it takes so much work. Uh, especially these guided runs, which are now up to 45 minutes long. Like, do you know how hard it is to talk for 45 minutes? <laughs> it's very hard. So they're all scripted. Like every single episode of the Run Selfie Repeat podcast that has ever been done with just me has been scripted. It may not sound scripted because I've got a bachelor's degree in theater, but they're scripted. So they take a long time to write and then they take a long time to write, uh, like, uh, 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 record and edit. So I'm at a point where I need help and I really want to uh, hire on a producer and an editor. So uh, check out my Patreon. It's a way that the tiers start at $5 a month. What you can do is you subscribe and every single month you can pay X amount of dollars to support me and so that I can hire more people to produce more content. The vlog needs help. Uh, uh, just like there's so much stuff that I've wanted to do over the years and I just need help. And it's at a point where I just, if you find any meaning in what I do, please check out my Patreon, the link's below. Uh, check out what's in store for you. It's not just like a give money and forget it kind of thing. It's a, you get bonus episodes of uh, the Run Self Repeat podcast just for you. Most of these will be turned into podcasts just for uh, the Patreon community. You'll get live streams and there's so many different like behind the scenes extras that go just for my Patreon community. So check it out if you're interested and if you can, uh, your support means the world to me. And it makes it possible for me to do what I do and to do more and to get more people moving in ways that empower them and that aren't just tied to weight loss and trying to lose weight because they don't love what they see when they look in the mirror and redefining what strength looks like. So there's that. Two, before we get into uh, the first week of training and you can see it all, I want to talk about where I'm at and Project Moonshot because I I like realistically kind of am on we month like six of marathon training, I guess. One of the reasons why I decided to run that half marathon in DC, the women's half back in May, was because I really wanted to get a really strong base under my belt and train for a half marathon and have fun doing something other than a marathon before taking on uh, the Chicago marathon. Once I finished the New York City marathon last year, I knew I wanted to do Chicago. Like there, it was just a done deal. Like I, I I needed to prove to myself that I was hurt, but like it wasn't going to hold me back anymore. All the stuff that happened with my piriformis muscle and the tendinosis and my hamstring and all that stuff uh, has been really hard to go through and, and push come out the other end of. And I still have pain in there, but there's tons of strength work that we're doing and there's tons of stuff. You'll hear so much more about this, but I needed to prove to myself that I wasn't hurt anymore and I needed a really fun marathon. And the New York City Marathon was like not the day that I thought I was gonna get, but I, I am like 100% positive that it's the day I needed. And I like walked away being like, I want to do Chicago and I wanna go all out. And so I kind of put this plan in place where I would run a half, I'd get a really strong base under my belt and then I would take off for the 16 weeks with Moonshot and just pedal to the metal give it my all and succeed. And you'll see uh, a conversation with my coach, Rebecca Stowe, this week. Not in this episode, but in the next episode. Kinda, you'll, oh, you'll see that when you see that. But, so I feel great. I feel really strong. I, we have so much work to do. 
so much work to do, but I have a really, really strong idea of where I'm at, what I'm capable of, and what I need to be doing to get there. This week was a big week. Uh, two speed days, a long run, and a Project Moonshot orientation, which Project Moonshot is this program that we do here in New York City. Uh, you can apply, it's open to anyone. It costs money, but you apply, you tell them your moonshot, what your story is, and then they pick a bunch of people who get in. Uh, there's three coaches who you'll meet in a second, and uh, yeah, this is kind of like orientation. I'm Coach Finley, I'm the head coach of Project Moonshot. We live in New York, how can we give New Yorkers all of the tools to be successful at the marathon? So we came up with Moonshot, 16 weeks, we take you through a training program, which we'll get into, we give you coaches, which we'll introduce these guys, we give you pacers, we surround you with a community of support, and we add in a bunch of great partners in the city uh, to support you away from your running while you're recovering and getting everything else done. Work, life, family, how do we focus 16 weeks and make something big happen? <laughs> I have two other coaches that I'm gonna introduce right now who are also, uh, this is their third moonshot. Uh, we've been working as a team for three years to make everything happen behind the scenes, logistics, training plans, making sure you guys are safe, healthy, happy, all the way through the program, working through the ups and the downs of marathon training. Um, but I'll bring them up right now. First up, Rebecca Stowe, Coach Stowe, third year. What are you looking forward to the most this year? New faces. Um, I enjoy seeing um, our newer faces and the experience that this has in, in changing your life. Um, I know that the alumni seem to be eager coming back and that they've made connections throughout this program that have really changed the trajectory of their... Are the alumni excited? Yeah! Coach Woods, what are you excited about? Uh, Same-ish thing. Uh, I am excited to meet some new friends and by the end of this 16 week journey have a brand new family and tight-knit community that we can all lean on and learn from and i know everyone out there has their own personal story and and moonshot journey and i'm just super excited to to be inspired by all the new faces no offense to the alumni but. <laughs> there was a brief clip of it i didn't film the whole thing uh, i went up and talked with a bunch of other project moonshot alumni and we talked about our goals and like how to really enjoy and succeed in the program and get the most out of it. So it was really fun. But um, mo uh, Moonshot Orientation was super overwhelming. There's 350 people in the program this year, which is insane. That is so many humans. Exciting because we get to meet a whole bunch of new people, but overwhelming because that's a lot of people. So it'll be great. Uh, this week, you ready to watch? Let's start with Tuesday. Go. Hi guys, week one. I can't, I can't do this and talk at the same time, so I'm just going to very quickly say hello. Hi, I'm warming up. It's Tuesday, it's uh, Tuesday, July 22, July, it's June, June 25th. <sighs> Week one, marathon training, peak you robust, Chicago. Uh, today I have 10 400s in one minute, 44 seconds with a one minute recovery. I'm gonna warm up and then we're gonna go to the trek. Uh, it's been thundering and raining all day, so I'm gonna try to beat the thunder and the rain. We have like a little window. <sighs> Let's go. Okay. Oh, it's about 80 something degrees, very humid, as you can tell. Um, this go around, one of the things I really think is beneficial is setting intentions for each workout, especially after your warm up, where you kind of know where you're at. I feel pretty good, but it's really hot. So heat and humidity always affect your performance. I don't think they're gonna perfect it, or perfect it. <laughs> I don't think they're gonna affect it too much, but there's a very good chance that I may not hit my times. So my only goal is to give best effort every time, every lap, 10 reps, which isn't that much for me, I guess. I'm saying that to make myself feel better. Oh no, what happened to? I found it. Already having issues with this GoPro. One down, 146. Here we go for two. Two. 145. Ugh. Three. 144. This is a rough day. These keep falling out. 
it's so annoying. 146, it feels like it's a thousand degrees. Halfway done, 155. I'm gonna let 144 go, and 150 is my new benchmark. 150, again, 152. This is really hard. So much harder than it should be. I knew that was going to be a struggle, but I did not think it was gonna be that bad. It was pretty bad. Okay, hold on, pep talk. Oh God. Oh man. Oh. If you are looking for someone who can knock their shit out of the ballpark every single time, this is not the vlog for you. One of the reasons why I wanted to do this was I found it so frustrating that there were so many videos of people being like, I ran a marathon in four weeks and finished in 3.30, or I ran a marathon in eight weeks and finished in 3.30. I've been working towards this goal for three years. Three years. And it means so much to me. But it's so hard. And not every workout, I'm gonna knock it out of the park. That was an example of a struggle all the way through, but get it done. That was 100% effort. Obviously, the weather's out of my control, but uh, happy with what happened today. It's no indication of my fitness. I know I'm in great shape. I feel good. Glad I did it. <sighs> Go home. Oh, Kelly, she's never learning. Like the fact that I, I, <laughs> the fact that I thought to uh, do a track workout at noon was just the dumbest thing in the world. But in my defense, there were thunderstorms in the morning. I'm I'm someone who will always put her life ahead of a, a risk. And it's just like, it's just running and I'm not gonna risk my life just to get a track workout in. So if it means, you know, you have to do it at an, an inopportune time, then you have to do that. But, and then the rest of my day was just batshit crazy. So it was like the only time I could do it. Uh, I did my best and then I kind of had a breakthrough which you could see Coffee talk with Coffee Michael. Do I use my pinky out or how does that? I had an epiphany yesterday because I waited until noon to go run, do my track work, and it was a casual 86 degrees and 80% humidity. No, I was going to say it was 200% humidity. It was awful. Awful. So and it was bad. exactly as I expected, like truly yeah. terrible. I did a red hook. And I realized. What was the uh, 10, 12 800, 12 400. And 12 400, and you had a certain pace. I was trying to hit 144. 144 per 400. And I think like the first two were like 146. Okay. And then it was 150, yeah. 152. Yeah. And I just felt yeah. horrible. And I realized when that happens, my entire, like, I my form really does go to shit. Yeah. And I think this is why. Well, you're this trying. Gets aggravated. There's a couple of things. Obviously, weather affects your heart rate significantly. And oh my god. Why, that's why it's more important to think about the effort of it. Like yeah. a 152 is probably a 145 or 144 in a yeah. day, right, with normal temperature. But you're trying to work harder and push your body more because you think you're yeah. not performing. And I got, more. you know, at the, by and the fifth one. Psychologically, you're yeah. You're, by the fifth one, no I was good, like, the new goal is 150. Yeah, everything's yeah, fine. Yeah. No. And then I'm garbage, but everything's fine. But you have to take that into consideration because weather is the, the element that we can't control. It was a rough day. Uh, but I think I realized, normally when I do strength after, it like helps it. It feels so much better. I think yeah, probably blood flow and yeah, moving. Yeah, movement, absolutely. And it still felt really bad. Yeah, assume you're saying your hips sit over it. Yeah, normally it was like pure performance. Train, you do the strength training stuff and it makes you feel better. But because you were working so hard, your form goes out the window. Yeah. I'm gonna guess that you were super overextended. So extended. And like the first thing you want to do before you do the straight things, which you may have may have not done, is to correct. Right? Do your, no, your breathing I didn't. stuff. Do your breathing stuff, correct the pelvis, get everything back into check, calm the sympathetic nervous system down, and then do your strength exercises. Right? Yeah. Does that make sense? So much. And then so. it's gonna feel better, right? Because then your pelvis is back, you're a little bit less stressed. Even though you started to adjust your goals, you're still a little bit in your head that that wasn't the workout I wanted it to be because yeah. I didn't hit my time goals. I was more just like, fuck this and out, it's going to be so like, hard. Your heart rate is so elevated still, like you think you're 
resting, but you're still elevated, right? Oh, yeah. Like if you're resting at that, you're walking out of the city and you're 100, and now you're at 120, you're not resting. Yeah, the rest of the day I felt like I had a fever. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the benefit of living in the burbs is I ran, walked into the backyard, and fell into the pool. Oh, God. For a half hour. <laughs> you don't have that in the city? I'm gonna come run with you. Yeah, you should come with you. Spare bedroom. That would be fun. Up. Do a trail run, a little barbecue after. I'm so down for that. Yeah, barbecue and pool party. That sounds awesome. <laughs> I will go to any we'll pool. We'll invite all of Nike Moonshot. <laughs> we'll all 4,000 of us. Have you seen how many humans there are? Humans. You sound like my five year old daughter. She talks about humans and monsters because of, uh, <laughs> because of uh, Transylvania 1, 2, and 3. I like those movies. Great. They're great. They're fantastic. So I like that you call us all humans. I call everyone humans. Yeah. It's too complicated. You can, I mean, you you can don't, call you me a can't monster. Assume. Right? I can't assume. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't assume anymore. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's what we learned. Weather. Day one, and look at the lessons. And then Thursday, the same thing kind of happened. I had to do something in the morning. I had that workout. And then I, it was kind of too hot to go outside. So I was like, I'm not doing that again. I'm gonna get on a treadmill. So I did that. Thursday, June 27th. I just got done at Nike. We did a, a really fun strength workout with Ash, who's one of the Nike trainers for the World Cup. So I'm gonna in my World Cup tee. Uh, yeah, now I have to go to the gym because it's already so hot and it's like 10.30. Ooh. And I have uh, two by 10 minutes at half marathon pace. <sighs> and it's too hot to run outside. So actually I could probably do it outside, but I'm gonna go to the gym because Tuesday was horrendous. So I'm just gonna call it safe. So we're going to the gym to run on the treadmill. Let's go to the gym. One down, one to go. Oh my god, that was brutal. The thing about the treadmill is like, you really have to be able to have a strong mental game to get through it, otherwise you just feel like a hamster on a wheel. But I spent a good 36% I think my Garmin said in the red zone, so that was a brutal workout. That was very hard, super hard. I feel like dead. I'm gonna go fill my bathtub with cold water and lay in it. Oh my god. That was a big morning. Week one, baby. Fuck. 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 <sighs> I'm so slap happy right now. I'm so tired. This is the end of Thursday and I'm selfieing on my iPhone. I almost just went to bed without doing this, but it's uh 9.40, a little late for me, but, uh, oh my god, I'm so tired. Today kicked my ass. I ran into, uh, someone that I know who is a contact at, uh, a company <laughs> after Badass Lady Gang tonight, and I think I'm just so exhausted. I was saying crazy shit and I just like, I think I was like stream of conscious talking, which I do when I'm nervous too. I wasn't nervous, I'm just so tired. And I was like, he was like, how are you? You look great. Like, are, which man, you're doing Chicago? Like, that's so exciting. How do you feel? And I'm like, I don't know, man. Right now I'm kind of at that point where I'm like, do I want to do this? <laughs> and he was like, what do you mean? And I was like, I don't know, it's so hard, and I'm so tired, and it's only week one. <laughs> and the look on his face was like, I don't know what to do with this. So I just have to say, oh god, marathon training is so hard. Like, and we're only in week one. <laughs> it's 
too early to be feeling like this. Like way, way too early. You can tell I'm tired because I keep rubbing my eyeballs like a two year old. I do this when I'm very tired. I was so tired I missed my subway stop. And that was really frustrating. All right, <sighs> my body hurts. <laughs> I forgot what this feels like. All right, mm, I think that's almost officially a cap on week one. Now we just have a long run on Sunday and then that's it. Week one's in the books. We're one week closer to, well, okay. I am like, it's Thursday, I need to chill. All right, bye.